Hi and welcome to this week's video. Um, this is another one in the set of videos that I'm doing just about all the equipment that I use. Um, this one is all about stabilising. Uh, there'll probably be three or maybe possibly four videos in this to take you right through a project. So I'm trying to make it a little bit more interesting by at least taking you through the whole process of me doing stuff just because these these for some will be very boring videos but this is about stabilizing and the stuff that I use uh, this is my main stabilizing um, pot this is the turn text one I get this from house of resin and it comes with this little bit at the top which actually just pushes down into the tube and stops the wood flow into the top of them I also have um, a slightly bigger one here um, this was just a cheap one I got off eBay. They're not as good as these ones. These lids have a habit of cracking. But um, I, it's a bit deeper so it's handy for doing bigger bits like blocks of wood like this um, in there. Although I think this one did actually fit in there. But if I've got some bigger stuff I'll put them into that one and uh, I'll use that one instead. So I, I tend to use between the two really. It's also very handy for degassing that one for degassing the silicone for mould making. The silicone that I tend to use doesn't really need degassing but I tend to do it anyway so just because I do. You can also you know degas your resins and stuff in there if you didn't want to put it into the pressure pot. It takes more time and it's a, it's a longer process but yeah you can degas your resins in that as well. The, the Resin I basically use for stabilising wood is the cactus juice. It comes in several containers. You, you get the one quart, which is the smallest one. The, that's already activated when you get that one out. Then you get the half gallon and you have to add the activating powder to that. And then you get the gallon one, which you have to activate that as well. Um, so I have, I have lots of different bottles going on at the same time because some of it I colour um, so obviously this is coloured blue so and I just keep that and it's with a chest set um, there's been quite a lot of stabilising of blue so that's why I've got so much of that but as I do different colours and stuff like that I tend to keep what I've used in a pot and then I'll just top it up and add to it rather than um, waste it. Several different ways to colour but you don't actually need to. For the, the majority of what I do, like of the elm and the oak as well, um, type stuff. And, you know, if I was doing these, because these are pretty flimsy, so um, stabilising these works really well. So if I do the likes of those, I just use the clear. So I just use it straight out of the bottle like that and into the chamber. Um, so I always have a lot of clear sitting around. And then the coloured ones would be for the likes of this or for when I'm messing around with different colours. I'm not going to go into double dyeing. There's a new video actually that's just come out this week and it is absolutely brilliant. It's Casey Martin that's got this video so I am going to direct you to him because I can't double dye like he does. Um, he's amazing. In fact, I'm going to be following his video as well on, on it and probably be messing about over the next couple of weeks because I think his ideas are spot on and his blanks and all of that stuff that he does with stabilising looks brilliant. So there will be a link down below. You'll see it, Casey Martin, and I'll actually link in that video and it's double and triple stabilising with colours. So I'm not going to go into any of the colours stuff. I'll tell you what I use for the colouring. I use a cactus juice colours um, and I also use the Illumilite um, dyes. They can all be used for colouring wood. You can also mix some of these colours to get some better other colours. Um, so it's a bit of experimenting but you can't use any of the powders. It's only these liquid stuff, only this two sets of liquid stuff. I don't think there's anything else that will um, colour stabilise. There is some colours that you can't stabilise. White is one. I think black is maybe another. And any of the fluorescent colours with the Illuminite dyes, those don't work. Um, I think I've got that covered, possibly. Um, so, that's the colour I use. Like, like I say, if you want to know about the double and triple stabilising of uh, mixed colours, 
go to Casey's link. I all my oak and elm burr now is stabilised for the pen blanks um, just purely because although I do some of my own without if I want a blank I won't really tend to stabilise it but then I'll, I'll fix any repairs because the burrs obviously the grain's not going in one direction so sometimes you know bits fly off it and it can ruin a pen but for me it's fine but um, I didn't want people that were buying it to have that issues. There still can be issues around using the burrs, not so much the elm, but um, the oak. Um, but, you know, that's the, they, they could be a little bit trickier, some of the oak and elm burr blanks. Melly burr and stuff, I wouldn't stabilise that, to be honest. It is dense enough as it is. <clears throat> These are only stabilised because I've added some colour to them. But other than that, I wouldn't actually bother. So, and like I say, it's handy for different stuff, casting different stuff, if you're going to be casting with resins to, to stabilise. Like I say, I mean, that would have been absolutely no good as a Christmas decoration that I did. I mean, it's, you can, it's soft, it's like a sponge, but once it's stabilised, it's absolutely solid. So, um, great for stuff like that. I'm going to take you through the process in the next part of this video which should be sort of part two really um, and we'll go through the process of that I'm not going to talk too much more about it <clears throat> I've got just the a V pump here which is a vacuum pump I think it's a two stage this one and it's 3.15 CFM just in case anybody's wondering um, it does all of this perfectly and when you're stabilising, you're obviously stabilising at full pressure, which is 30 psi. But I think you can only draw 30 psi at certain altitudes, so that might vary. I think I sit between 29 and 30, mostly with the stuff that I do. Um, I think I'm only 600 metres up here, where I live. So that's the equipment I use with the cactus juice, once you've poured it in, uh, none of it goes to waste because once you've left it overnight just to soak in, you can empty them back in. I just use one of these and empty it back in and it can be reused. So, um, yeah, there's no waste with it. Once you use that amount, it's not wasted. Whatever's left, you can reuse. And you know, it's the same with all the colours and that. Um, the Turntex website has a good... Um, bit of information about the dyes and about adding the dyes they also have information about stabilizing and double dyeing so you can check all that out on the turntex website i'll also link that in below because it's got a good bit of information but all of this stuff that i have here apart from from that here all comes from metalclays.co.uk forward slash house of resin they're both the same company um, so all of this stuff comes from there so it's all readily available in the UK which always wasn't the case because um, I'd looked at having one of these before but the import tax was nearly as much as, as buying it so um, this one is particularly good because I can see if there's any air bubbles in the stuff and my pen blanks is normally in strips the, the burrs that I use so I can sit it up quite high the only thing that you do have to be a little bit careful of is, is you don't fill it up too much. When you turn on vacuum initially, which you'll see in the next video, the bubbles rise as the air is coming out. Um, so you basically just have to be a little bit careful for that, that you don't end up sucking it up and into the pump, which I have done, but managed to get in and clean it out. So you do need to be careful of that because you can actually destroy your pump doing that. So that's it that's the equipment i use and where i get it all from uh, so i hope that's a bit helpful for you you know so people have made their own um little vacuum chambers and stuff up i mean i've used like big thick glass jars in the past for certain stuff i wouldn't recommend it though because you know if those if there's a fault in that jar or anything um it could just collapse in and completely shatter everywhere and could be pretty dangerous so i do recommend going for a proper container but you know there probably is videos out there about making your own if you're interested in doing that anyway that's it 
we'll get on to the next part of this video which is stabilizing some wood.